Okay, so there's been a lot of talk about quantum computing lately, especially with Google's unveiling of their quantum chip Willow and Microsoft's announcement of the Maya Runner 1 chip. Now, as a nanotechnologist and materials engineer, I'm not quite sure how these recent advances have actually happened. If you're new to quantum computing, here's a quick rundown. So while classical computers, like the one you're using today, they process information in simple ones and zeros, quantum computers use qubits. Thanks to the principle of superposition, a qubit can be both zero and one at the same time. And then there's entanglement, where two qubits are actually entangled, and so measuring one instantly gives you information about its partner, no matter what the distance is between them. That sounds weird, so let me try and explain it in a different way. Imagine you have a thousand keys and a thousand doors. Now behind one of those doors holds a solution to a massive scientific challenge. Let's say solving climate change. A classical computer would have to try each key on each door one by one. But a quantum computer can, in a sense, try all of the keys on all of the doors at the same time through quantum parallelism. The more qubits you have, the more doors you can open simultaneously, enabling you to tackle problems that classical computers can simply not solve in our lifetime. Now that all sounds amazing, right? But there's a catch. Qubits, whether made from atoms, ions, or photons, are extremely delicate and they're error prone. A stray particle or random photon can bump into them, collapse in their quantum state, and destroy whole pieces of data from the system. And it's one of the reasons why quantum computers are not as reliable as we would like them to be. So what's changed with Google and Microsoft's new chips? Well, let's start with Google. In quantum computing, a gate is a basic operation that manipulates qubits. One of the challenges with quantum computers is that even tiny errors in these gates can quickly add up, leading to incorrect results. The Google team addressed this by developing a new quantum metrology protocol called Quantum Signal Processing Phase Estimation. By applying Fourier analysis, they can separate and precisely estimate different error components in qubit gates, which allows them to dramatically enhance calibration accuracy. And this is how their new Willow chip is creating a new way to reduce errors and therefore increase scalability in quantum computing. So now let's talk about Microsoft. Their innovation comes from the creation of indium arsenide aluminium one-dimensional topological superconductors. Phew! These are special nanowires where unique particles called Majorana zero modes can emerge at the ends. Now, these particles are fascinating because they're essentially their own antiparticle, or opposite, a property that makes them incredibly stable. Rather than confine it to a single point, Majorana zero modes can spread quantum information across the surface, which acts as a protective shield against errors. This could pave the way for scaling quantum computers with millions of qubits, a huge leap from today's best systems, which have around a thousand qubits. Now, I have to add a quick note here. Microsoft state their breakthrough is supported by peer-reviewed research. However, I've read the paper that they refer to and it states, the measurements do not unequivocally distinguish between Majorana zero modes and low energy Andreyev bound states. And this is important because Andreyev bound states cannot be used to create qubits. But I'm gonna give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt here and assume that there's more behind the scenes that they haven't published yet. So there you have it. The new quantum chips from Google and Microsoft both use different techniques to push the frontiers of quantum computing. While the images of these new chips involve people holding them in their hand, don't expect quantum computers to replace your laptop anytime soon. They actually require temperatures lower than the coldest points of deep outer space to function. So they're usually surrounded by a cryogenic refrigeration system, as well as signal generators, amplifiers, and a whole bunch of cables that will take up your whole office, not just your desk. So hopefully that explains what is new in quantum computing and how nanotechnology and material science are laying the groundwork for a technological revolution.